days are right, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long have pity on your servants. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I now, join you, I now ask you to join me in praying these intercessions, and your response will be, Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. O oh God created the world and filled it with the marvelous signs of his power. He also blessed human toil from the very beginning so that in modest imitation of the creator's own goodness, we might diligently devote ourselves to bringing creation to its perfection. Let us then call on God saying, Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O oh Lord, who gave us the command to work so that by relying on our minds and our hands, we might devote ourselves to perfecting creation. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who, who willed that your son made flesh for us should practice the carpenter's trade. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who in Christ made the yoke of toil sweet and its burden light. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Blessed are you, O Lord, who receive with the favor the offering of our labor, so that it becomes an offering of penance, brings joy to our brothers and sisters, and helps the poor. Lord, graciously guide the work of our hands. Now we pray. Lord, our God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, your Son healed our infirmities and diseases. And when he sent forth his disciples to preach the gospel, he commanded them to visit and heal the sick. We ask you then, Lord, that you will grant in this precious, precious gift this new Sangre Grande Hospital campus, the grace to all the physicians and staff, that they may show kindness to all the patients who will be confined here and dutifully attend to them with skill here. May this facility, Lord, serve future generations as a community of hope, consolation, and healing. We therefore pray a blessing upon this facility in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. You may be seated. Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. The Honorable Terence Dial Singh, Minister of Health. Honorable Members of the Cabinet. Mr. Roger Monroe, Member of Parliament for Toko Sangri Grande. Mr. Rai Ragbir, Member of Parliament for Kumuto Manzanilla. Mr. Asif Ali, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health. Deputy Permanent Secretaries, Management and Staff of the Ministry. Dr. Roshan Parasram, Chief Medical Officer. Mr. Kenwin Phillip, Chairman of the Sangri Grande Regional Corporation and members of the Council. Ms. Esme Rollins Charles, Chairman of the Eastern Regional Health Authority, members of the Board, the Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Ronald Soyafat, Management and Staff of the ERHA. Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Board of Udicott and members of the Board. Mr. Mika Charles, Chief Executive Officer, Udicott, Management and Staff of Udicott. Mr. Thomas Zangirl, Managing Director of VAMID, 
and members of the executive team. Mr. Marc Francois, director of Beston Consulting and members of the executive team. Father Steve Duncan, Episcopal Vicar of the Eastern Vicariate and Tobago. Specially invited guests, members of the media, members of the national public viewing live on TTT, Unicot and the ministry's Facebook pages, and listening on I-95.5 FM and Talk City 91.1 FM, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, Mark andre Augustus, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the official opening ceremony for the San Gregory Hospital campus. Our pearl of wisdom for today, as it is known in the medical profession, is patient experience and reflective learning. Pearl. At the top of our program, kindly welcome Mr. Roger Monroe, Member of Parliament for Toko Sangri Grandi, to bring us the welcoming remarks. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremony. Let me immediately recognize the Honorable Prime Minister for the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, the Honorable Terence Yal Singh, Minister of Health, members of the Cabinet, members and staff of the Eastern Regional Health Authority, the CEO, Board of Directors, and I would not repeat the entire protocol listing, so I stand on the protocols that were already established. A warm Toko Sangri Grandi good morning. You're not sounding like you're all happy to be here. A warm Toko Sangri Grandi good morning. Much better. As member of parliament for the most beautiful constituency, Toko Sangri Grandi, it is my esteemed pleasure to welcome you to Sangri Grandi this morning. Today is indeed a great day in the history of Toko Sangri Grandi and the northeastern region of Trinidad by extension. At this time, I would like to formally welcome you to the opening ceremony of the new modern 106-bed inpatient Sangri Grandi Hospital campus. This teaching hospital is designed to serve the medical needs of the growing population of Sangri Grandi and environs. It is proposed that this facility will operate in conjunction with the existing Sangri Grandi Hospital and the neighboring Sangri Grandi Enhanced Health Facility. Firstly, let me take this opportunity to thank the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. The Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, and by extension, the government for their vision and ensuring that this first-class medical facility and others are constructed in strategic areas across Trinidad and Tobago, with Sangri Grandi being no exception. Commendation and congratulations to my parliamentary colleague and the Minister of Health, the Honorable Terence Dial Singh, for the start and completion of this Sangri Grandi Hospital campus, and most importantly, his hands-on approach during the construction phase. Special acknowledgement to the CEO, Mr. Ronald Soyafat, Board of Directors, supporting members of staff, and the entire team of the Eastern Regional Health Authority. Commendation also goes out to Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Urban Development Corporation, Trinidad and Tobago, UDICUT, and his team for the management and oversight of this project. At this time, allow me to also acknowledge Vamed Engineering Company for the timely execution and delivery of this quality project. I must also make mention of the opportunities that were made avail available for my constituents and local personnel during the time. Let me express the fact, ladies and gentlemen gathered here, and those who are viewing, that as member of parliament, I am comforted knowing that the entire Northeastern region have additional access to quality healthcare. With the addition of this new facility, 
and the astute management of the staff at the Eastern Regional Health Authority. Before I close, I just want to make mention and once again congratulate the minister, congratulate all of my people within the Northeastern region for this new facility and put on the record that this new Sangre Grande Hospital campus is one in most recent times, the single most valuable investment made by this government in this part of the country. And I think we deserve a lusty round of applause for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I close, I welcome you once more to the most beautiful constituency, location at hand, Ojo Road, Sangre Grande. And thank you very much, and may the good Lord continue to bless you. Uh, thank you very much, Member of Parliament, Roger Monroe. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now welcome to the podium the Chairman of the Eastern Regional Health Authority, Ms. Esme Rollins Charles, to bring us her remarks. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. Dr. the Honorable Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Terence Dalsing, Minister of Health, Honorable Members of Cabinet, the Honorable Roger Monroe, Member of Parliament for Toko Sandy Grandi, Dr. the Honorable Rai Ragbir, Member of Parliament for Commuter Mansur Miller, Mr. Asif Ali, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Deputy Permanent Secretaries, Management and Staff of the Ministry, Dr. Roshan Pasaram, Chief Medical Officer, Members of the Board of the Eastern Regional Health Authority, the Acting Chief Executive Officer, Mrs. Angelina rampasad Bear, the Management and Staff of the Eastern Regional Health Authority. Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Board of Udicott and members of the Board. Mr. Mika Charles, Chief Executive Officer and Management and Staff of Udicott. Mr. Thomas Zangel, Managing Director of VAMED and members of the Executive Team. Mark Francois, Director Beston Consulting and members of the executive team, Father Stephen, Steve Duncan, Episcopal Vicar of the Eastern Vicariate and Tobago, specially invited guests, members of the media, members of the viewing public, and those following us on social media. Ladies and gentlemen, very long, um, good morning. On behalf of the Eastern Regional Health Authority, I'm pleased to welcome you to the opening of the new Sandy Grandi Hospital campus. Today, we enter into a new and exciting phase in the provision of secondary public health services, especially to the citizens in the eastern sector of the country. The only existing public sector medical facility in this region, the Sandy Grandi Hospital, was commissioned on December 2, 1953, and was originally designed as a county hospital with limited services to meet the needs of the then extremely rural community. The responsibility of this county hospital and its client base increased with the establishment of the regional health authorities in 1994. This authority responsible for the delivery of public health services in a catchment area stretching from Matalot in the northeast through Guayagayari in the southeast, an area that includes the entire east coast of Trinidad, bounded on the west by the communities of Rio Claro, Brothers Road, Kumuto, and Valencia. The catchment population of the region is currently estimated at over 150,000 people. However, this population figure escalates exponentially over weekends and during holiday peak periods. The cumulative effect of increased planned and unplanned spontaneous settlements, changes in the demographic structure of the population, and increased mobility have imposed additional demands for public health services from the ERHE. The Sandy Grandi Hospital remains the only secondary care institution in the Eastern region 
and is complemented by 16 primary care health facilities and a satellite dialysis unit at Rio Claro. There have also been numerous infrastructural and equipment upgrades at all of the facilities managed by the Eastern Regional Health Authority. As our population grew and the demand for medical services evolved, it became clear that we needed to adapt and expand the services in response. The challenges of high and increasing occupancy rates and the need for referrals to other institutions for services which were not currently offered in the region also needed to be addressed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Health seeks to expand the delivery of healthcare services in the country. One of its objectives is improvement of the physical infrastructure of public healthcare facilities. This is realized through physical upgrade and construction of new facilities and the commissioning and use of modern technology and equipment. As part of a strategic vision for the improvement of healthcare services to the catchment population of the Eastern Regional Health Authority, the decision was taken to construct a new wing for the Sandy Grandy Hospital to provide even greater access to quality healthcare services and to meet the growing needs of our residents. In March 2020, the Ministry of Health embarked on the construction of this new wing for the Sandy Grandy Hospital utilizing a campus model where both in and outpatient medical services will be provided at the existing building and the new building. This will allow for an increase in bed capacity and the introduction of medical services not previously available in the region. The sentiments articulated in the opening of the Sandy Grandi Enhanced Health Center in 2018 can again be expressed on this occasion as we celebrate not only upgrades to the bricks and mortar, equipment and technology, but also celebrate the spirit of care that will reside within these walls. Our clinicians, other healthcare professionals, nurses, administrative and support staff will be the heart and soul of this facility as they work tirelessly to ensure that each patient receives quality healthcare delivery as well as excellent patient experiences and outcomes. That is the Eastern way. Where we live our washwords, caring is the key. That is how we have served for over 30 years and intend to continue to do so in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, as we unveil the state of the art facility, we are not just opening doors, we are opening a new chapter in the history of healthcare in our region. With expanded and new services, the Eastern Regional Health Authority stands ready to meet the challenges in healthcare today and the demands of tomorrow. On behalf of the staff, the board of the Eastern Regional Health Authority, residents of the Eastern Region who are our valued stakeholders, I am honored to express thanks to the government of Trinidad and Tobago and the Ministry of Health for this initiative. I also wish to recognize Mr. Ronald Soyafat, CEO, unfortunately not here with us today, who was a driving force in the development of this campus. In closing, I extend my warmest congratulations to all who played a part in bringing this vision to fruition. May this new Sandy Grandi Hospital campus be a source of healing, comfort, and inspiration for all who walk through its doors and utilize our services. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Thank you, ERJ Chairman, Ms. Rollins-Charles. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now take in the rhythms of the Shaquille Alexander Drum Troop.
Thank you, drummers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to the Honorable Terence Dial Singh, Minister of Health, as he brings us his remarks. Thank you very much, Andre, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. the Honorable Keith Rowley, whose vision and drive has us here today. I want to recognize all cabinet colleagues. I have never seen so many cabinet colleagues at the opening of anything with health. And if I call their names, it will take too long. I also want to recognize the Honorable uh, MP Rai Ragbir, MP for Kumuto Manzanilla, Ms. Esme Rollins Charles, Chairman of the ERHA and her staff. I want to recognize Mr. Asif Ali. I want to recognize, I'm, I'm coming to Roger because I have a little thing for Roger. I want to recognize Roger, MP Roger Monroe for Toko Sangirandi. But you know he committed a sin this morning. He did not give us any redfish. <laughs> we cannot come to Grandi and don't get red, redfish. Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of Unicot, members of the Board of Unicot, staff of Unicot, um, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Roshan Parashram, all officials of Eastern RHA, members of the team from VAMED, thank you for being here, members and staff of Sangri Grandi. First of all, I want to recognize the absence of Mr. Ronald Soyafat, the substantive CEO of the Eastern RHA. And to say that if he was here today, there is no way we could have this function and not sing the ERHA song. I see the ERHA staff clapping. Mr. Sawyer Fat would have insisted that we celebrate with the ERHA song, and he would have had printed out the lyrics. <laughs> Correct, staff? Dr. Dukiram, <laughs> I know the man. Ladies and gentlemen, before I get into my formal remarks, I must say that we are meeting under some challenging and sad circumstances, and that I acknowledge. But the progress in the health center will go on as we face these challenges. Just to give you some numbers as I proceed into my formal remarks, 1,741 square kilometers. That is the area that the ERHA covers. That's a huge area. But look at the population, 157,395. But the area is so diverse, so spread, it does face some challenges with ERHA, stretching over four counties. You have 16 health centers, as Chairman um, Rollins would have said. And this geographically diverse ERHE, serving fishing villages, towns, markets. It's really a cosmopolitan part of Trinidad and Tobago. And the ERHE has stood out as a beacon of excellence over the years. And for that, I think ERHE staff <laughs> deserves a most hearty round of applause. And we could sing this song afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, the commencement date of this project was December 30, 2019. Chairman said construction actually started in March of 2024. But I wanted to throw your minds back to that time. It's in the rearview mirror, but that was the time of COVID. And you know, whenever they ask us as ministers, when is a project going to finish? We always say, on so and so on date, barring unforeseen circumstances. COVID was totally unforeseen. But I want to alert you and the national population that what we face in building these projects as far as unforeseen circumstances. You would not think that the blowout of a door in a plane with Alaskan Airways would affect this construction project. But do you know it did? Because on that same day, or the day after, consultants were supposed to fly in here on that same type of plane. So when you had that blowout and all those types of planes were grounded across all airlines, the consultants can come in. That is to tell you how complex these things are. But we overcame. 
And we are here today celebrating the completion of this project. The contract sum is TT $850 million VAT exclusive. And for the people served by ERHA, you will have a spanking new 106 bed facility. 106 beds of pure excellence. Let me give you a breakdown of what you can expect. On your medical ward, you will have 24 beds. Surgical ward, 24 beds. Trauma and orthopedic, 24. General ward, 24. And 10 critical uh, care beds, four ICU and four HDU. That is what you can expect. What are some of the major features of this hospital? You're gonna have three operating theaters an endoscopy operating theater. For the first time in Grandy, you will have an MRI machine. For the first time. So it means patients of Grandy, yeah, you can, you can clap. <laughs> because you see, it's only when you live in Grandy and you have a family that needs an MRI, you have to send them where? Eric Williams. You're gonna have a new CT. So in the past eight years, Grandy will have moved from no CT to two, from no MRI to one, and that is progress we must celebrate. You're gonna have fixed x-rays, fluoroscopy, and so on. So that in a nutshell is what the project is going to look like with the physical capacity. One of the major issues facing Grandy is parking, and I don't need a round of applause for that one. <laughs> We know that because I got the consultation notes that the ERHA would have had with communities. And parking was a major concern. So the new car park is going to have 253 spaces. But in the coming months, it's now in the procurement phase, you're going to have another car park with 160 spots. So you all you're going to have about 100, uh, over 300 new car park spaces, and hopefully that will make life easier for staff and your patients. So that is what we are doing physically. I think the next question to be asked is how we plan to phase in services. We are going to follow the same model that was used successfully in Point Fortin and Arima. So with a new hospital, you don't start off everything at the same time. So phase one, which starts, I am told, April 19th, will be a familiarization tour for staff to come in, start to get familiar with the systems, the IT system, the, the equipment, the CT, and so on. The ERHA plans to conduct a series of tours for both public and staff to familiarize them with the new facility, in addition to the consultations that were had in both this area and in Mayaro. The action starts hopefully on April 19th. Outpatient clinics, same model we use for Point Fortin and Arima, and it worked. And then in May, we start the adult accident and emergency medical ward, so we start to take patients in. That's where the inpatient process starts, and then we go on like that. So the facility is going to be phased in in its use over the next two months or so. For those of you who are of my generation, you may remember in the old days when you bought a new car, you had to do what? Break it in. You didn't go from zero to 60 in the first thousand miles. Same thing we are doing. We have to break in the facility. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Prime Minister, as part of his national agenda and his vision for Trinidad and Tobago, has always spoken about the need to digitize and to bring this country into the era, era of digitization. I think the Honorable Prime Minister and everybody will be happy to know we in health and the RHAs have taken that challenge seriously. We know and at public board meetings, you hear, I get the complaints, lost records. It's an issue, because as the population grows, paper grows. And you know the problem with archiving physical records. 
I am happy to report to the national community that our digitization process is going full steam ahead. And we have, as part of our vision, led by the Honorable Prime Minister, a day when you have one patient, one record. One patient, one record. So if you are living in Diego Martin, and you come to Toko for a weekend, or you go to Mayaro, and you need medical care, we can access your information electronically with your correct patient ID and so on. That's where we are going. There are three steps along the way to that. Electronic medical records, which is phase one, where we are in now, where we are digitizing furiously. Stage two is electronic health records. And stage three, electronic patient records where now you can make an appointment for a clinic on an app. But we are in electronic medical records now, and to some extent, electronic health records. Let me briefly explain that to the national community. In electronic medical records where we are, it means that patients within an RHA, so within Eastern, within North Central, etc., will have digitized records. We are doing that now. We are far advanced in different RHAs. Electronic health records is when now you have a record within an RHA, you are now connected to the other RHAs. So if you're in Grandy and you have to go to Mount Hope or something, they can access your records electronically. And that's the phases that we are in now. And I'll tell you something, the early data is pointing to so many inefficiencies in the current system. I won't go into all the details here. But we are moving furiously under the mandate of the Honorable Prime Minister to digitize and digitalize on the way to one patient, one record. That is what we are doing. Not only building physical facilities, but also putting in new systems and procedures that are fit for this century as we move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud of ERHA. I want to recognize them for the excellence they have brought to the healthcare system over the years. And again, in the public consultations which we had, and Angelina sent me the, the verbatim notes, one patient in the public consultation said this. She said, I hope when the new hospital opens, that people from Grandy will get care first between before foreigners. And you know what she meant by foreigners? People from outside Grandy. <laughs> so I think when I read the notes, whoever answered that question answered it skillfully. Rajiv, was it you? Rajiv, <laughs> Dr. Bhagalu. He said, look, we are operating one health system. <laughs> it's for all the people, but we will try. <laughs> Right? That is to tell you the reputation that ERHA has built up over the years. So in closing, may I thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his vision, not only for the hospital, but for digitization, matching the physical with the electronic. May I thank ERHA and the substantive C uh, uh, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Ronald Soyafat, who has been at my side for eight years, he could not be here today. Brother, I know you are listening. Our thoughts and prayers and support are with you, as always. I want to thank Vahmed, Yudikot, and everyone who helped in bringing this project through to fruition under difficult circumstances. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Minister Dial Singh. At this point in our program, we will be now be regaled by the Eastern Chorale under the direction of John Thomas as they sing, reach out and touch somebody's hand.
place if you can reach out and touch somebody's hand make this world a better place if you can take a little time out of your busy day to give some encouragement to someone who's lost their way and would I be talking to a stone if I asked you to share a problem for someone that's not your own we can change things if we start giving why don't you Thank you, Eastern Kura. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored, pleased, and privileged to welcome to the podium Dr. the Honorable Keith Christopher Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, to bring us today's feature address. Thank you very much, Mark. A very good morning to all our fellow citizens gathered here. I would ask your indulgence to use the entire protocol acknowledgement list because I think we are all worthy of our time and attention. So let me begin by recognizing my cabinet colleague, led by the Minister of Health, Honorable Terence Dial Singh, acknowledging also my, all my other cabinet colleagues. There's one missing, I think, the Minister of Works and Transport from Sandy Grandi. I have to find out, because it's for. I'm in San Lugani, am I? Good. Uh, I also would like at this stage to recognize two of my parliamentary colleagues, especially um, a member of parliament for Tumko San Lugani, Mr. Raja Monroe, and my other parliamentary colleague, Dr. Rai Ragbi from Komoto Manzanilla. I would like to pay special acknowledgement to the permanent secretary, Mr. Asif. Ali and his team from the Ministry of Health, which includes Dr. Roshan Pyrsam and other members of the medical fraternity, doctors and nurses all, 
Mr. Kenwin Philip, Chairman of the San Grande Regional Corporation and members of council. Ms. Esme Rollins Charles, Chairman of the EHRHA, members of the board and management associated with her team. Mr. Noel Garcia from UDICOT and UDICOT's team. Mr. Thomas Sanger, Managing Director of VAMED and VAMED's executive team. Mr. Francois, Director of Destin Consulting, who worked with the executive team. Father Steve Duncan, for your invocation this morning, member of the Episcopal Vicariate of and Tobago. I didn't realize that Tobago was still associated with the Eastern County. Specially invited guests, members of the media, all members of Trinidad and Tobago citizenry following us on the various news media. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the projects that was very dear to my heart. And today I am particularly satisfied and pleased to be here at the delivery of this facility to the Eastern Regional Health Authority. I just want to say that decision-making at the level of the cabinet is always one of insufficiency. There is never enough to do all that is required to be done or what one would like to be done. So the cabinet functions on making priorities. And in so doing, you could never please everybody because you would have left somebody out as you have selected somebody to go forward. But this area, the eastern part of Trinidad, and, Trinidad in particular, the eastern part of the nation of Trinidad and Tobago, has for very many years been on the back burner. It used to be on the front burner when cocoa was the prime export of Trinidad and Tobago because given the hard-working people and the conditions out here for cocoa cultivation, this area was in the forefront. But as the economy changed and more focus was placed on the central and western part of the country, with the reflection of time, the eastern part of the country got further and further away. But it is the vision and the expectation of every government of Trinidad and Tobago that we try to ensure, notwithstanding the obstacles and the challenges in the way, that wherever people live in the country, that they have access to not just the basics, but whatever the country has to offer at its best. And that is why we, in a very difficult period, had to choose development projects like this in the eastern counties because you had been left behind for so long. You would have been told that the San Grande Hospital, the one that we were using before, that had some elements of containers as part of its structures for use, was established in 1953. That was quite some time before we became independent. And today, 70 years later, we are receiving this modern facility as a deserving offering of the nation to the people who live in this large part from Matlot all the way to Mayaro. But as my grandmother would have said, nothing happens before its time, but that's really a consolation. But ladies and gentlemen, Permit me a moment to reflect on how we've made our priorities in the country for the last 10 years. Identifying the delivery of health care as a national priority. And I know we are very good in this country at taking things for granted. But let me just point out to you that given all that we had to do with the limited resources that were available to us, in the last 10 years, our record as a nation in focusing on the infrastructure for healthcare delivery is quite outstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, in the last 10 years, 10 years sounds like a long time, 
in only 120 months. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have built and delivered hospital in Cuba, one in Point Fortin, one in Arima, a top-class health facility in Diego Martin, a lineup machine costing $75 million in St. James, specifically for cancer care. A hospital in Roxborough. A hospital in Sangre Grande today. And a billion dollar construction at the Port of Spain Hospital. <laughs> so when you hear people who just like to say negative things in this country. See, nothing is happening in the health center. They ain't doing nothing but health. Anytime you hear that, just remember that it didn't happen by accident that these facilities I just mentioned got priority attention from the various cabinets of Trinidad and Tobago. Health has always been a priority in Trinidad and Tobago. Before I came into government, one of the things I did, I worked throughout the Caribbean. And I can tell you, without fear of contradiction, there's nowhere in the Commonwealth Caribbean, in fact, nowhere in the Caribbean, including Puerto Rico, that can boast of a concentration of effort in healthcare delivery as in Trinidad and Tobago. But I want to say that these structures I would have mentioned do not by themselves guarantee healthcare delivery. It is what goes on inside these facilities that will determine the quality of your healthcare. But these facilities are essential foundations and skeletons to put you in a position to get health care that you need. Today, I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I am particularly sad because I brought with me the sadness of seven or eight families who in recent days, instead of enjoying the birth of young ones, and you know the tremendous happiness that brings to families, we as a nation have to face some kind of accident of some kind in one of our main hospitals resulting in what appears to be some shortcoming and the loss of life of our newest citizens, eight babies being lost in eight families. It puts a pall of sadness on Trinidad and Tobago. For some people, that is an opportunity to jump on their house and start to prance and parade and to blame. For me as Prime Minister, I simply want to know what happened in Port of Spain General Hospital. It is easy to take the easy way out and to say things that are not supported by facts. We as a nation, we need the facts. We need to know. And we will leave no stone unturned to find out what happened in Port of Spain General. <laughs> we can only be better by finding out what actually happened. We can only do better by finding out. And there are processes to be followed and what I say to the nation, let us have the investigation. I have been informed that the Pan American Health Organization is invited to do an independent inquiry. Let us await the outcome of that and see what has happened. Because it is very painful, but we want to make sure that we're treating the facts of the situation. I happen to know that hospital. I happen to know what goes on in the 
neonatal care department. Because there was a time when I used to go in there every evening at four o'clock, expecting to be told that my firstborn didn't make it through the day. And she was born at seven months and weighed three and a half pounds. And it was the outstanding healthcare delivery in that hospital that caused me today to be the happiest father in the country. And my daughter not only survived, but prospered. Ladies and gentlemen, it's easy to put ourselves down, but let's give ourselves the opportunity to find out first what has happened and commit to rectify where rectification is required. But to come back to San Grande Hospital, I also have a personal story here because I had a very close cousin who needed hospice care. And from Port of Spain, he ended up in San Grande in his last days. And I used to come here to see him in those sad days. And I left here, buoyed by noticing the outstanding care and attention afforded him at the San Gregandi Hospital, where the physical conditions were far from satisfactory. But the spirit of the staff did not pass without notice. I always remember at San Gregandi Hospital, had staff who had so much to complain about, so much to be obstreperous about, so much to be annoying about, but they focused on providing the best health care that was available using what was available to them. <laughs> and that has been the hallmark of the Eastern Regional Health Authority. So today I want to thank Ms. Rollins Charles and her team, and all the doctors and nurses who held the fort here in Sangre Grande, for all the people who got their services from Sangre Grande, whether you come from Matlot, from Kumana, from Mayaro, from Beach, wherever you come from, you all were most patient. And today it is your turn to receive the latest, most modern, and probably only held campus, because it's the only one I know carrying the name campus. They were not satisfied to tell you you have a hospital. What you have is a campus. And you did not give up the old hospital that we had refurbished some parts of it. You somehow managed to integrate it into that intention to give the best health care in Trinidad and Tobago. And I know you will. <laughs> I have had instances where there were people, especially young people, disappointingly, who did not want to come out to work in the ERHA because they didn't like what it was. I guarantee you that within the next five years, they'll be rushing to come to San Grande to work in this facility because they will want to work in a quality facility and an area where the nation is saying is probably the best healthcare availability in the country. The range of services to be provided here is expanded, and that being so on a foundation of service that you have made your hallmark can only augur well for all the people of these eastern parts of our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, that being so, I want to say to all of you who work here and to all those who work in facilities like this, doesn't matter what you do, it's only when something goes wrong that you realize how important your little part is. Whether you are the person taking the garbage out, because if you don't take the garbage out, you could infect the ward. Whether you are the person putting the equipment in the tray or the person who is making the incision in the chest, every one of you 
has a very important role to play. And if your role is not played and properly played, you could threaten the empire. There's a little poem I like to remind you of this called For the Want of a Nail, a Shoe Was Lost. For the want of a shoe, a horse was lost. For the want of a horse, the battle was lost. And for the loss of the battle, the empire was lost. A nail could cause us to lose the empire. These facilities cost a lot of money. They are supported by large ongoing sums of money in annual expenditure. The intention is that they will bring benefits for each and every one of us because there are two things that are guaranteed to us. Is that we have a desire to be in good health and we will be visited by death at some point in time. Guaranteed. And these health facilities are meant to treat with the life and in some instances the death of each citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. I ask you, do not at any stage in any place take any aspect of your responsibility or joke or be irresponsible. Ladies and gentlemen, let us get from the investments that we've made the best possibilities that they offer us. Let us not score half a point if a whole point can be had by each of us pulling our weight in every area. What the Eastern Regional Health Authority has demonstrated and continues to demonstrate to us as a nation is that it is possible to do more with what you have, whatever that is. It's an attitude. And I'd like to commend that attitude to the nation as a whole. Let us not wait for perfection. Let me tell you the story about my constituent, Kayanaj, who lives on the street of the police station and seeing a burglar going to a window, calls up the police station to report that there's a burglar going through my neighbor's window. An idiot on the phone in the station says, well, we don't have any car. And, um, you know, we don't have enough resources. And I don't want to tell you what my constituents did on that occasion and how she dealt with that. Because you don't need too many resources to walk up the street to find out who is going in whose window. But we have an attitude in some quarters that if there is not a perfect state, then a perfect state cannot be aspired to. Ladies and gentlemen, we have challenges in every area, not only in health, in education, in transportation. As a nation, nation building is itself a challenge in every possible way. But we as a people, we have a lot to celebrate. We have some resources. All we need is an attitude of can-do, of patience, of satisfaction, and God knows of gratitude. Today. We say thanks to all the people led by our manager, uh, who's not here with us today, but who played a signal role in driving the record of the Eastern Health Authority. And the board, which many people don't know, never heard of, as was named Rollins Charles and her board, because they don't make the seven o'clock news. And of course, a team of doctors and nurses, many of whom are unknown, even in the region where they work. But the people here, I think, like me, know that if they go to the hospital in San Gigandi, that there are people there who will make it their business to ensure they get the best of what is available. That is the attitude that we can adopt across the nation. Doing more with less and making the best of what we have as we aspire have more and to treat with more people. So let us celebrate today, ladies and gentlemen, as we are able to, as we rectify problems where they exist, as we anticipate 
the conclusion of the central block in Port of Spain in general, as we make the most use of the lineup machine in St. James, as we make the most use of the Diego Martin Health Center and the New Roxburgh Hospital when it is fully operationalized, and say, ladies and gentlemen, that in our nation, one of the things that we can point to is that healthcare delivery is not a bankrupting issue for the people of Trinidad and Tobago. I don't want to use the word free because nothing is free. It costs millions and billions. But when you receive the care that you receive, appreciate that what you may have contributed from your pocket on that occasion is but a minimal cost of what you receive. There are few countries in the world where leading edge technology, like the use of line-up machines, MRI, CAT scans, and expensive medical infusions are available at no cost to the recipient at the time when it is received. Very few countries in the world have that. We take it for granted, or we take it as an entitlement. It's an entitlement that's available only in so far as we ensure that we put ourselves as a nation to make that available to the people of the country based on their own resources that end up in the treasury under the control of the cabinet. So ladies and gentlemen, there's much that we can say about Sangriani and its environs. I heard it's the best county, best constituency. But you know, I tell you a story about a Mexican who insisted that Mexico City was the most beautiful in the world, talking to a Frenchman. And the Frenchman said, well, you haven't been to Paris. Because Paris is the most beautiful city. And the Mexican said, no, I don't have to go there. Because I know Mexico City is the best, so I don't have to go to Paris. So you hear about San Diego being the best? Because they haven't been to Diego Martin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say I'm proud to be associated with one of the hardest working members of parliament in the government. And I, I trust that the same way the Eastern Regional Health Authority is a beacon for all those of you in the health sector, that the work being done here by my colleague in the eastern part, from Matlot all the way to the eastern main road here, is an example to young people across the nation that you can work hard, you will be appreciated, and that you can bring about change. So I want to thank you all very much for bringing this facility to the point of usage from the drawing board through COVID to the construction challenges. And as minister responsible for UDICOT, I want to join UDICOT's team in saying one more project signed sealed and delivered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister Ali, for your future address, bringing us vision, compassion, wisdom, and insight. Special thanks to the Honorable Terence Dial Singh, Minister of Health, Mr. Roger Monroe, Member of Parliament, and ERHA Chairman, Ms. Esme Rollins-Charles for your illuminating remarks today, members of the cabinet, various ministry officials, specially invited guests, members of the media, and members of the listening and viewing public. Thank you all for your very kind participation at today's opening ceremony. Thank you, Father Steve Duncan, for the opening prayer. We thank those who work so hard to prepare this site for today's ceremony, and thanks also to all our entertainers, to Judah Barker, the Shaquille Alexander Drum Troupe, and the Eastern Chorale. Thanks, too, to the choreographer and dancers of Studio C, who warmly welcomed our guests this morning. We will now have the cutting of the ribbon and the unveiling of the commemorative plaque by the Prime Minister and his entourage, consisting of Honorable Minister of Health, Cabinet Ministers, and Member of Parliament, uh, Permanent Secretaries, Chief Medical Officer, Unicot Chairman and CEO, Chairman and Acting CEO of the Eastern Regional Health Authority.
This is TTT. Live for local.